guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us, as always, is John Campia. Well, greetings and the most heartfelt salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie-related show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California, and we are so glad you decided to make us part of your day. Also here, John Schnepp. Why are you so excited? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, hey, no. What's going on? Hey. <laughs> also, going here on? is Mark Ellis. I don't know why he's so excited. Why is he so excited? I don't know. I need to know. It seems like an inside joke that I missed, and I want to get to the bottom of it, and I will by the end of this episode. <laughs> All right, folks. Hey, listen, before we get uh, moving with, with the show today, and we're doing, uh, we're letting you guys run the show today. We're going to be taking your questions live all show. So how do you get a question? How do you program our show today? It's simple. You jump on Twitter. Make sure you're following us on Twitter, at Collider Video. And just tweet to us your comments, your questions. We're gonna just let you guys kind of direct the the, the uh, direction of the show today. But before we do, we got a couple things we want to get into. Number one, we talked about it coming into 2016 that some of the best trailers of 2015 and some of our most anticipated films of 2016, and one film that falls into both of those categories is The Witch. This is a film that is getting. Huge praise from the film festivals. You've seen it, Mark. A witch! No. A witch! Murder! Murder! <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I like have seen this movie. I love watching this movie. It is great. And uh, as a matter of fact, Collider right now, Collider.com, is having a little bit of a giveaway where you can get, get this, you can get flown out to the premiere of The Witch in Salem, I believe, wow. no less. And look in the description of this video for some of the details, and you'll also find a link that you can click on where you can go and enter this giveaway and see if you can get a trip out there. All you look, it's a great package. Make sure you look. No? Yeah. Nah. I was gonna say, can we oh, enter wait. this? <laughs> can we enter this giveaway? I this seems so see cool. In there will, about will I'm gonna they, enter. Uh, will they burn us at the stake? Is that part of the? Uh, That's if you win the bonus prize. All right, bonus. If you win the bonus like, prize. like if you work at McDonald's and try to play McDonald's Monopoly, you're not allowed to. You cannot win a Dodge Viper. But <gasps> in this mean. case, I would like to throw my hat into the ring to win this stuff. To see it again. I think, yeah, to see it again. You've yeah. already seen it. Yeah, That's you've already seen fair. it. You're not allowed to do that. It's great. I was in Boston a couple weekends ago, and I want. I'm when I'm there this summer, I'm going to. Because they found the the actual like knob that hill where they actually did the Salem witch trials. They 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 confirmed this is the one site. So I'm gonna go stand on there and see if my feet start to burn. That's mm. that's uh, awesome. So yeah, make sure <laughs> jump into the uh, description of this video below. See some of the details as well as that link to take you over to the page on Clyder.com where you can enter this incredible giveaway for the witch. Now before we get to your questions, we're gonna jump into your questions pretty much right away though. It is, of course, Tuesday, which means it's time for us to talk a little bit about what is opening this week, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Three major releases this week. We're going to talk about one of them today, and that is Zoolander 2. I love the original Zoolander. Amazing. Like, I watch that thing about ten times a month because I it's one of the two or three movies I put on Netflix to help fall asleep to. But it's just because I love the movie so damn much. Uh, so it is finally, maybe it's waited too long, but it is finally back and it is opening this week. I got to tell you, I am so stoked to see this. I am so excited to see this. There's actually a screening for it tonight. And unfortunately, something else came up and now I can't go to the screening, which I'm kicking myself over. But I'm dying to see this. I, I'm so glad Mugatu's back. I'm <laughs> so glad Hansel's back. I'm so glad so many of them back. All is all I'm really excited for it. I don't know if it'll be good or if it'll be horrible. I just don't know. But it doesn't matter because I'm super excited for it. Mark, do you have any anticipation for this? Oh, uh, yeah. I actually do get to go to the screening tonight because <laughs> what the hell do I have to do with my night? I cannot wait to see Zoolander 2. I'm going in with a tiny bit of apprehension, though, kids, because when I see the trailer, Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson and Will Ferrell make me laugh. They were in the first one. Penelope Cruz, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, I know you love the line he has. And they haven't really <laughs> done it for me yet, so I'm waiting to see more of that. I know it's going to be chock full of celebrity cameos, a lot like the first one was, so I'm very cautiously optimistic optimistic because it's a comedy sequel and sometimes you don't always get the best return oh, for your often, dollar often you don't get but you and return. i and christian were having a conversation about this yesterday where there have been some great comedy sequels that maybe even surpass the quality of the first movie i'm gonna throw naked gun two and a half wayne's world two you said hot shots part two which is a hilarious movie I, uh, but it's not as good as the original hot shots uh rush hour two was that the, you you pointed sure. out to me that's kind of more like an action comedy and beverly hills cop two i think it's more comedy than action for sure right. and i love that movie 
movie. So it has been done, but the stigma, the lingering stench, the the original witch of Caddyshack 2, just oh. like a dark cloud hovering yeah. over comedy sequels. <laughs> anyway, what about you, Shep? How, how much or how little are you looking forward to Zoolander 2? I'm in the middle. I mean, Dumb and Dumber, the the second one, was fun. It was it wasn't a horrible sequel, but it didn't it wasn't as funny as the very right. first one. But that's 20 years later. But it still was really funny. I enjoyed the second I th- one. A Zoolander 2. You know, I think Kristen Wiig is an addition. The, all those sequences in the trailers made me laugh. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I'm not in the same boat as you. Is like I liked the first Zoolander. I didn't love it. I thought it was okay. I just the only scene I remember is them playing and get with the gas at the gas. One station. of the greatest scene, yeah. single scenes in. Yes, in I mean that always makes history. me laugh. Just thinking about it makes me laugh. But uh, you know, I'm I'm a wait and see category. It, it, there's no way that it's going to be better than Deadpool. I could say that right now, <laughs> very very confidently. So. All right. Well, let's move over to the Twitters here. Once again, if you want to get one of your questions or comments in the show, simply tweet to us at Collider Video. <laughs> so, Ashley, what uh, are people sending in already? We're going to start off with Biggest Dickus. And he writes, <laughs> oh, What damn. are your. Get off Twitter, mom. <laughs> <laughs> he writes, What are your favorite movie endings of all time? Mine is Whiplash. Oh, Whiplash That's a good is a great ending. one. Yeah. Yeah. Whiplash yeah. is a great ending. Um, a movie I talk about a lot uh, Life is Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I literally saw that movie in a movie theater with about six members of a bike gang, and like four of them were crying. I'm not even exaggerating. And like four of them were crying at the end of that movie. I mean, it's just a beautiful, spectacular ending. And of course, look, you've seen, you've heard me go into it before, so I won't do it again. I won't subject you to it. The freaking ending to Best of the Best. The ending to Best of the Best. Mm-hmm. I am deeply regret the loss of your brother, and I offer myself to you as your new brother. <laughs> Come on! I've never even seen this movie. I don't, oh, know, what he, I don't know what he's ending. talking about, dude. The you got to see be, starring TV's Eric Roberts. You got to see better. James, James, Earl, James Earl Roberts Jones. is in it. James right. Earl Jones. I might see it now. Yeah, yeah. Go see it. So th- those, those one. What about you? Great endings to uh, movies. What popped up into my mind immediately was like Alien and Aliens. Both of the endings of both of those films were great. When Ripley's like, you know, you think it's over, and then. The aliens like I was just sleeping on your escape pod, and then the second one, the sequel, is like get away from her, you bitch! And she's fighting the giant mom. Yeah. Those two endings to me, just uh, you know, there's a lot of endings, there's a lot of movies, so I'll just pick those two. And clearly, the best ending in movie history is Freddy versus Jason. When you think oh, you think God. one, and then the other one winks at you, <laughs> that right. one's horrendous. The ones that pop into my head are very kind of polar opposites as far as maybe the movie fan spectrum. The Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade, the way that movie ends with oh, all them. Great riding ending, their yeah. horses all, off into the sunset. And it would have been so easy to kill off Sola or Marcus at the end of that, but they didn't. All four of those guys get to ride off. They're laughing about Indy being the name of the dog. Love it. The other one is actually a film that Ashley and I talked about yesterday when we were filming our most anticipated Lionsgate releases, The Notebook is just something that mm. the ending of The Notebook, I was I thought I made it through the movie. I was like, oh, people cry during this? Tough old <laughs> eats nails for breakfast Mark Ellis. And then the ending happened. I was like, oh, God, it's coming at the me tears pretty hard. Begin. Oh, my God. Hey, so here's good. another one. Rocky. The very ending oh, the, when the, the first he's yelling Rocky. out for Adrian. I mean, that's when you're like... Oh, that w- was yeah, that the, the first, first one or the second one? That, that was, was the first, first one. one. Was the first. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't win in the first one. Yeah, but, he, but he I would prefer the her. fourth one because that's what ended the Cold War. So, <laughs> no. Ellis, you're wrong. <laughs> All right, what's next? Jaws um, is another one. Jaws is a great one. Remember, don't mess with Roy Scheider. We're on the next question. <laughs> no, another ending is just kidding. <laughs> All right, Spiff Biff writes, is there any hope of us seeing a Hit Girl spinoff movie in the future? Um, considering that there's almost zero hope that we're even going to see another kick-ass movie. Right. Um, see, and I, I just don't know that that's something Chloe Grace is... Uh, is She's like 24 know. now. So yeah, I mean, it's woman. now Hit you Woman. Mean, yeah. I, I Look, I'd go see it. I, I would definitely go see it, but I don't think there's much hope of it. Considering, you know, I think I believe the second kick-ass made less than the first mm-hmm. kick-ass. That's never a trajectory studios like to see. So uh, I'm, I'm going to say don't hold out much hope. Not impossible. This is Hollywood, but don't hold out a lot of hope. What do you think? Nope. It'd be great if Matthew Vaughn uh, at least wanted to like be an executive producer, have some sort of story input. He seems to be so on board with the other projects he's working on, like the Kingsman. So I don't see it happening. Yeah, how do I? All right, what's next? Mucha B. Ahmed writes, why are dead? Why does Deadpool have a 65% rating on Metacritic? 
Uh, I don't know. I really pay very little attention to Metacritic. Uh, to me, the, the much better system stuff is on Rotten Tomatoes. But I actually tweeted out today that, look, right now, Deadpool has an 84. At least the last time I checked this morning, Deadpool has an 84% on Rotten Tomatoes. For most standards, that's a really good high score. But to me, it's tragically low. <laughs> that is a That is a tragically low score. It just makes me lose my faith in humanity a little bit, that it only has an 84. And an 84 is a great score, don't get me wrong. But I'm very disappointed in some of my colleagues. Like, I look, I remember saying to you, walking out, I said, look, all films subjective, and there's a lot of films that I cherish and love. I can even understand why Star Wars isn't for everybody. I can understand why Ben-Hur isn't for everybody, but to me, they're awesome, blah, blah, blah. I walked out of Deadpool going, I just can't imagine how somebody won't walk out of this being entertained. But apparently 16% of the idiots out there weren't entertained. And I, I don't get it. All film subjective totally. It's just this is one that boggles my mind. Because it's super violent and it's got a very raunchy sense of yes, humor. And we know not everybody's going to like that kind of stuff. Now, me personally, it should be at, at 100% on every critical base that you want to talk about. Luckily enough and horrifyingly enough, Rotten Tomatoes counts my opinion. I'm not sure what Metacritic did. I'm not sure if, if it's like the IMDb rating, if anybody can participate, if that's just professionals in the industry. Industry, but whatever it is, 65 is way too low. 84, I can accept. It should be up towards the 90s, but 65, that's way too low. Trust us, kids. I know you watch us. I know you listen to us and take our opinion somewhat, some of the time. You're going to love Deadpool. Yeah, I think a lot of people went to crybaby school who were like, you know, <laughs> writing their little dumb reviews. Like, I really loved it and laughed, but I must sound adult. It's like, listen, just don't listen to those idiots. It's really fun. You'll laugh your ass off. It's dirty as all hell, and it's an enjoyable film, and it's a really well-made film. The script is incredible. Ryan Reynolds is incredible. The direction of the film is incredible. Everything about it is amazing. So, I mean, to me, when I, I've read a few of the, the sem somewhat negative reviews, even though they're like, I begrudgingly have to say I did enjoy it, <laughs> but <laughs> shut up and just try to enjoy life. <laughs> All right, what's next? Christian. I think that's going to be the name of our new show, by the way. <laughs> Shut up and enjoy life. I'm not sure how we're going to spell the middle word there, but we'll, we'll get that out. All right, Christian Veed Weird writes, who are your favorite comedic actors, past and present? Love the show. Ah, uh, favorite comedic actors. I mean, Jim Carrey was on a great run totally. uh, for a very long time. I mean, Liar Liar is so freaking good. I love Liar Liar. Go yeah, his that. physical humor is 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 hard to top. I would go back. I mean, if you, I mean, I, I'm an old school person. I love Charlie Chaplin. I mm -hmm. love Abbott and Costello. I love the Three Stooges. You know, Abbott and Costello, Marx Brothers. If you don't know who I'm talking about, this sounds crazy. Like, what's he? The, is he he's recanting a spell? These are comedians Ancient from times. the future. Yeah, the Honeymooners is before that. So I mean. Those are the guys who kind of like, you know, put it all together. You know? Yeah, when you watch Sid it, when you go back and watch the physicality of Charlie Chaplin, what he was able to bring, like the dude is phenomenal at not being just a physical comedian, but even just the tiny little winks and looks that he gives to the camera. And I think it's something that inspired pretty much every comedic actor that has ever lived, including my favorite of all time, Bill Murray. Mm -hmm. I think he's the best across the board, although I love Jim Carrey. He was a huge influence on me, as was Eddie Murphy. If you go back and watch The Nutty Professor, just watch one of those dinner table scenes I still think it's a crime that Eddie Murphy was not nominated for some sort of Oscar for being able to pull that off it is still one of the funniest things I've ever seen in a movie Eddie uh, Murphy and Steve Martin in Bowfinger oh, don't Steve forget Martin. about Steve mm -hmm. Martin the, the dirty, jerk, rotten scoundrels. dirty rotten scoundrels uh, but you mentioned Abbott and Costello and and that is that is one of those old black and white comedy teams that oddly enough a lot of their stuff holds up now like if you've never seen any Abbott and Costello like skits or whatever mm -hmm. or clips look them up on YouTube or some other online service and see what you can find and even if you've never heard of them before a lot of their humor which was done decades ago will still make you laugh it's really um, funny modern day I for the last five years I've been a huge Paul Rudd fan oh yeah and it, it, like he's becoming more prominent A-list now but a number of years ago, he was just that guy who you could slide him into a comedy and he would elevate the comedy. Nobody knew the name Paul Rudd when he was in 40 Year Old Virgin. Right. But that dude elevates that movie. Nobody knew the name Paul Rudd when he was an anchor man. But you put him in there and he elevates that movie. He's always been so good at that. So he's one of the more modern today guys that I really do. Who would be a, like a modern day guy that you Louis really C.K. for me. Oh, Louis I mean, with, great, without yeah. a doubt, his TV series, Louis, is one of the things I look forward to every time there's a new season that drops. 
playoffs, I'd try to watch all of them. Right. I, I think for what he was able to pull off in Transformers 4, and then when you go see him in Deadpool this weekend, you might agree with me, is T.J. Miller is the guy who can be the next comedic star in movies. And I also think Key and Peele, they had a phenomenal sketch oh, show yeah. run that was very short on Comedy Central because now they're doing movies. Keanu comes out later this year, and I think that that could be like what Tina True. Fey and Amy Poehler are able to yes. do, which is also another comedy team I love. And I forget the young lady's name, but I was watching Step Brothers the other day. She plays the wife of Adam Scott in that, and every time she pops up, oh, yeah. I'm on the floor laughing. She's a so Catherine funny. Catherine Hahn, I believe, yes, is her that's name. that's exactly And who she was is. in yeah. Parks and Recreation. Yeah. She had a great run yeah. on that. She was also had a small role in Anchorman. She's done a lot of supporting roles. I yeah, will not forget she, the name again. So yeah. funny. Let's She's not forget great. Amy Schumer. I thought she was incredible in Train Wreck. Right, and right. I'm really looking forward to whatever she does mm -hmm. next. I, I want like to see a little more from her before I put her on. I want to see another movie from her before I put her on the list You're just saying the brand new people who's like, pop off immediately like she's in my list now because of that film so all right what's next aj atalev writes hello who is your favorite teen slash child actor or actress teen <laughs> i mean all the time you gotta, oh. you gotta go i had uncle buck on the other day for some reason and, and even younger john Macaulay candy Culkin is in that yeah john candy yeah no, no <laughs> It's my favorite child actor. My um, favorite child actor is Laurel and Hardy and Jerry Lewis from The Other Question. <laughs> what? Jacob Tremblay from The Room. I, he might not be my favorite, but I think he has oh, a lot is. of talent. Well, the, the uh, little kid. Kevon Wallace, who was great oh, yeah. in... in um, Beast uh, of... Uh, what I, is that? I almost said Beast of No Nation, no, no, too. It's a, uh, something Wild Beasts. Or, uh, Wow. I don't know why it's... my mind is blanking as well. Um, I'll get throw, it in a second. The, the, you guys, you guys look up the name of that movie, which I remember was really good. And uh, I'm going to say Ty Sheridan, who is the kid. He he first came onto the scene playing a character named Ellis in Mud, and his name gets thrown around for a lot of these roles, like Spider Man and other things that he didn't end up getting for whatever reason. But Ty Sheridan is definitely a guy to keep an eye on. Jonathan Key Kwan, uh, who was short round in uh yeah. indiana jones and mm -hmm. he was in goonies mm -hmm. he was so fun he was so fun to watch when he was on screen doing that stuff so he stands out for me i think all the kids that were messed up by wc fields should all get an honorary <laughs> pie it's like a little cake honorary or something pie. here's a little brownie all right what's next freshness 1216 writes besides star wars if possible which trilogy had the most satisfying third movie well you mentioned the indiana jones one uh in the third Indiana Jones film was great. Uh, great ending. The riding off to the sunset mm -hmm, probably right. should have been the final Indiana Jones movie that, with that <sighs> ending. Much. Riding yeah. off to the sunset. Uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, 11 Academy Awards yeah. for Return of the King. So that it was also had 11 good. endings. Yeah, it's but... <laughs> really added the satisfaction. Um, Alien 3. Just kidding. Uh, no, uh, Toy Story 3. Uh, Toy Story 3 is a Toy good one. Toy Story 3 that is, is a really good one. Killer. Yeah, I remember oh, thinking, and a lot of people say that they liked Austin Powers 2 better than the first one. I did not like Austin Powers 2 at all. So walking into the third one, I had very little expectations and was very pleasantly surprised. That movie is hysterical. Is the third one with Michael Caine or it's is the gold second one? The oh, second, so it is a third one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's gold member. There are two things mm -hmm. I cannot stand in this world. One, those who are intolerant of other people's cultures. And two, <laughs> the Dutch. <laughs> Michael Caine from uh, Austin Powers. Michael Lake Caine's show. great in everything. <laughs> yes, I wish is. I wish I thought going into it I could throw the Dark Knight Rises on there, but man, that didn't end well. Bing bong. Man. Hey, Michael Caine's not that good in Jaws 3D, the third one. What are you talking what? about? No, this he's time in Jaws. It's is it the he's in Jaws one? the Revenge. Ben. Jaws he's 3D. In Jaws the, Revenge when had the shark Dennis follows Wade. Ah. You have Louis Gossett okay. Jr. Junior, that's and right. And then in, in Jaws the Revenge, the shark gets ESP and, and decides to swim to warm waters where sharks cannot live, by the way, just to go kill the last Brody, who is an 80 year old woman like yes. are you that pissed off at the family yeah. you can't let her live out her last seven years or Dude, whatever they blew up a bomb in his ancestors yeah. don't mouth. bring me down but, hey if Bruce. a shark's that motivated yeah. to kill you just just let it happen yeah, it's gonna happen if he especially if his esp it's like it's a super shark <laughs> i've never understood that, so that dumb whole i don't think romantic. you were allowed to understand it otherwise put you in prison just because something. you can't wrap your pea brains around a shark hey. that has esp <laughs> being a great that film. movie is like you jumping into outer space to get revenge on a monkey it, it makes as much i don't understand Who I to see that movie. I'm actually going to put money down to see Ellis jump in outer space to get revenge on that monkey. Damn monkey. Which monkey? All right, what's next? Amazing Spanya Man writes, how accurate is Entourage to the Hollywood lifestyle? You know what's funny? It's... Okay, I was late to the game, to the to the Entourage party. I, I think I picked it up in like season four, season five, or something like that. And I was already living in LA. And I, I got to tell you, it, it's it's 
ratcheted up for hyperbole's sake, but it ain't that far off. No. I am telling you, it is not that far off at all, Mark. Yeah, I, I think that the dealings between agents and managers and stuff like that, it probably gets a little more heated and a little bit quicker in the show than it would in real life, even with a star as big as who uh, Vinny is. But I think that the way that he surrounds himself with his friends and how his friends have little misadventures and walking the streets of Los Angeles, that really is like they film that show pretty honestly in L.A. on location all the time. So you're walking around, you're like, oh, that's where the guys, oh, that's where it is. It's like, it's all right here. Like, and that's kind of our life. If you're, if I'm not doing movie talk, I am just bumming around at the Grove or something like that, just walking around aimlessly like a loser, like somebody who has no direction in life, a lot like the cast of Entourage. And I've seen Ellis's Entourage, the weird shuffly <laughs> comedians who are like picking up his little crumbs. He's like, here you go, shuffles and shankles. Remember, step a foot behind me. I'm with my nerd squad. We're like, walk past each other don't don't face face me ellis i'm at the grove i'm looking for the snow you know and then i'm like hey that monkey stole my watch that's right he's I'm going in outer space outer space to the moon ellis <laughs> yeah it's uh, the entourages out here are way scarier and freakier than the ones on tv yeah. i'll say it's that. true he's got like a little gaggle of guys that walk around behind him like writing down little things yeah. he says that's funny mark can yeah, i use shuffle, that shuffle, yeah. shuffle. no you can't use that that's mine yeah. mine <laughs> all right what's next um, Geek of WPG writes, why do you think Asians are still not represented in movies and TV shows? Is it the lack of actors or lack of opportunity? I think huh. it's lack of intelligence. Oh, I said that specifically for my wife. I'm just going to wait <laughs> to get home now and have her beat the living crap out of me. Um, no, it's, it, look, that is one that in the midst of the discussion, this this came up uh, the other day. In the midst of the discussion, you know about uh, the Oscar so white thing, and it has really primarily been focused on African American actors and performers. But within that discussion, another voice has emerged. Say, well, wait a minute. What about like Asian performers that get almost no representation? In North America, and there's still an underrepresentation of Latino Mexican performers in our film as well. When you consider the the, the proportion to our uh, population size, there is an underrepresentation of a lot of people groups, as a matter of fact, and not the least of which is Asian. And at some point, and if anything good can come out of all this discussion uh, about you know diversity in Hollywood and stuff like that, I hope. Because sometimes people, when they hear the term diversity, they only think African-American. Right. And there are issues there that need to be addressed and dealt with. But I hope it opens up to the discussion to other people groups as well that are really tragically underrated or are underrepresented uh, in our entertainment today. And look, I've always said that film studios, you know, the major Hollywood production companies, stuff like that, they are not the keepers of you know, our North American culture and what is right and what is wrong. And, and nor should that be their responsibility. But I'm hoping at some point they can learn and we can, we as a culture can show them that by embracing diversity, it can be profitable and good for business. And I think once we get there, they're going to turn that things around. But I, I'm just really glad that the, at least the discussion has been brought up now because these are issues that need to be addressed. Anyway, Schnapp, how do you see it? Yeah, I'd like to see more diversity in, in all in all races and minorities. And, and, and I think it, what you're talking about, too, people have to go out and see these things. If there's a movie that's representing Asians, hopefully it's a good film, but then you have to go out and, and see it to show that there's a box office, there's there's money to be made. Because, I mean, representation is, is one thing, but then it's also remembering that this is a business. So you have to like get both over. You yes. have to get over yeah. on both of these counts. So not only do you have to cast people of minorities and cast different different types of people and, 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 and do different kinds of stories, but then allow that to actually be a, viable to be something that can be proven at the box office or if it's on television, can get those ratings. And that means it has to be of a certain quality. And that also then that also means that people have to watch it. So you can't just say, I want to see more diversity, but then when the diversity is there, you don't watch it. So it's really important to put your money where your mouth is. Right. It's a change that definitely needs to take place as far as the lack of opportunity goes when you're talking about big budget studio films here in America. But if you want to go exploring a little bit and you want to check out some of the other markets for cinema across the world, there's a lot of great films that come out of Japan. And particularly, there's a lot of scary horror movies that sometimes will pirate and then remake here, like Ringu versus The Ring or The Grudge or something like that. Do yourself a favor. Check out some of the original forms of those movies. They're even scarier. And by the way, there's a, a great 
great website that's run by a guy that actually used to do some online movie blogging with me. His name's Todd Brown. And he started a site called twitchfilm.net. It is absolutely the best site online for Asian cinema. It's actually, yes. they cover a lot of international, international cinema. International, I'd say, yeah. But, like, they really have a great focus on Asian cinema. If you really want to know what's going on and, get, like, get some great recommendations for things that you should absolutely check out. And actually, Todd is one of the producers of... Uh, of uh, 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 the raid, awesome. Yeah, Todd mm. also is one of the producers of the raid. He runs Twitch Film. I highly encourage you to check out TwitchFilm.net and uh, see what you're missing out on. Yeah, that, I used to go there all the time to find out what international films that I want to see because they always put up trailers and they post yeah. articles. It's a great site. And you look at it's like, huh? Like uh, there are lo there are a number of Asian films that some North American fans do know about. I think because TwitchFilm.net totally. got behind them and really championed them and pushed them and got them out to our conscience. So uh, check it out. All right, what's next? Big stupid jellyfish, right? <laughs> Having a baby today, a best movie what? birth scene. Congratulations. Wow. First of all, yeah, congratulations. Big jellyfish. I can't wait to the little baby <laughs> jellyfish. Yeah, big dumb little baby. <laughs> yeah. jellyfish. Um, I don't like birth scenes at all. Knocked so. up. Hilarious. Bam. Bam. I see how knocked up is actually not a bad one. Yeah, that's I, a good I'm one. I'm going to take one that it's so madcap and ridiculous and screwball and spoofy that sometimes they can be a little distracting. But if you just sacrifice some of your brain and enjoy the action, the hilarity happening on screen, you can enjoy the birth scene in nine months. It's Hugh Grant. It's Julianne Moore. It's Robin Williams. It's Tom Arnold. It's just madcap mayhem in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And it's really funny to watch. I almost thought you were saying nine and a half weeks. And I was like, well, I don't remember the birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, she totally got um, pregnant. Uh, what about uh, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective 2, Call of the Wild with uh, Jim Carrey <laughs> coming out of the back of the rhino? I think that that's a, that a birth or a poop. I, right. I, I, I'll Here's leave that one. up to you to decide. Yeah, I, want, I want big giant jellyfish. You should watch this. It's uh. Uh, the amazing birth sequence in the movie The Fly, when the oh, Gina Davis gives oh. birth to that weird little wormlet that, creature. Yeah, that, yeah. It was a nightmare, though, right? Oh, yes, it was. It was a nightmare, but I think but you still, should watch that that's disturbing. And I'm just bummed that the birth scene in American Sniper got cut, because we could have seen that fake baby come out of a real person, <laughs> and it would have been touching. And we're all, speaking of David Cronenberg, check out The Brood, where she gives birth to a, a ton of babies coming out of boils from her skin. <laughs> Love you, jellyfish. Dude, the guy's having He's a kid child today. today. You want to put those images in his head? Yeah, I want to make it beautiful. Hey, watch this ugly stuff. I could have referenced so. It's Alive, but I didn't. <laughs> but now I just did. did. Alice. All right, what's next? Tebow forever, right? <laughs> Thoughts on Will Smith's film opening against Rogue One? Wow, I... Yeah. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, Will Smith's got a new movie coming out. So it's more of a drama sort of thing. Uh, I'll look up the name of the movie here in a second, but. They just announced that they've decided in their infinite wisdom, you know what would be a good idea? Let's open this in the same week as Rogue One. Um, not incredibly bright. However, if you want to look at the potential upside of this, and we, we bring up this phrase quite often, counter-programming. Yep. Uh, I mean, so you're, if you're going to get a bunch, of, um, a bunch of people who may not be like really into stars who want to go out, but they still want to go see movies that weekend, this could strike a chord with counter-programming and maybe you could score some, some box office money on that. It doesn't, as a movie fan though, it doesn't tell me, it doesn't reek of uh, confidence that the studio has in this movie to put it up against Rogue One, but we'll see. What about you, uh, Schnapp? Uh, well, I think the, the title of the new Will Smith movie is called Rogue Two, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's going to go right against Rogue One, but uh, it's an action comedy in outer space. That's what I heard. Rogue <laughs> oh, that's Two. A yeah. No, I don't know. I mean, you know, counter-programming, like Sisters. We use that. Tina Fey and uh, Amy Poehler's Sisters opened up kind of opposite of The Force Awakens. Same day. Did really and well. made a ton of money yeah. consistently. Oh. I think it was number two, making like six million bucks. Oh, my God. From the never-ending story, it's <laughs> Falcor. This is my friend Falcor. The never-ending story. Oh, Here you go. Look. <laughs> yeah. Look at that little face. He just came walking over to my He's feet. walking over. He just came walking over to my You feet. know, Falcor, yeah, and I, I get that it kind of looks like the dog from never-ending story, the flying dog. It is but the dog from Never Ending Also, Falcor has a vibe of the shaggy dog or the shaggy DA. So I'm just saying there's a chance that's an actual human being that John is carrying right now. <laughs> that's a real person that John's carrying. Turned that's into right. a dog by it's, a magic it's voodoo screaming, Let me go, Campy. I demand to be free. <laughs> like wriggling around but it's a dog <laughs> it's great how he just cradles the dog and then shows it to the world and it's like that's all you get that's you get right. five seconds of foul core right. and you get just 50 so you minutes know, of us dog here. Uh, look i'm gonna say this about will smith's movie i don't know what it's about yet it's clear that will smith has no interest in being in an outer space adventure you had your chance with resurgence so now you got to open against another one but also this is not going to be a force awakened situation and nobody loves star wars more than me okay 
Rogue One is going to be huge. It's going to be a monster. It's going to be very successful, but it's not going to be The Force Awakens where it literally swallows everything in its path. Right. And even though The Force Awakens did that, Schnapp makes a great point. Sisters came out and had not only a decent opening for what it was going up against, but it also made money week after week after week. So if this movie's good, it will generate box office. Plus, if you got to open it in Christmas, it means you're getting Oscar consideration. So maybe they have some faith that Will Smith's performance could finally get him an Oscar win. Okay, so the name of the mo movie uh, is Collateral Beauty. Uh, Falcor came over to let me know about this. Oh. <laughs> so I was looking up. Uh, it's, it's named Collateral Beauty. Um, and, you know, when you stop and think about it, The Force Awakens, which was probably going to be the bigger box office juggernaut than Rogue One, Sisters opened up against it. And it actually ended up making a, mm -hmm. a bit no, of money. While you were doing Falcar, we were just talking about that. Did you mention Sisters? We like, yeah, yeah. We t well, I you usually were, tune you guys yeah. out. No, I know. So, the, both uh, me and Ellis both said sorry, that okay. repeatedly. When you and Atreyu you were on your mission to yeah. some library to read He's a off book. of the never-ending story four. <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, it's called Collateral Beauty. It is a drama and stuff like that. So uh, who knows? Maybe this will be a, a gamble that'll pay off. Yeah, but you know what? Rogue One's probably going to have Darth Vader in it. So that's going to be awesome. Right. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Will Smith, you screwed up. You could have been Rogue Two or Rogue One, whatever it is. Hater. <laughs> All right, what's next? Dylan Davidson writes, which actor would you like to see reprise a role in a rebooted franchise? My vote is J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson for Spider-Man. It's pretty much the only one. That is the only, like, I, my personal philosophy is if you reboot it, you reboot it. Uh, you Then you just get rid of all the old cast. You don't bring pe people back. The one exception. The one exception I would make is J.K. as yes. uh, J. Jonah. I yeah. mean, that's, that's the one. He was so perfect for that. Now, I don't know, maybe once we see the tone of the new Sony Spider-Man, we're going to go, okay, yeah, maybe somebody else would be better shade. I don't know, maybe, but it's hard for me to imagine anybody playing that role better than J.K., but yeah. we'll see. I would like to see someone new, but I, I think J.K. Simmons was the perfect J. Jonah Jameson for that Sam Raimi Spider-Man that was kind of a love letter to the Stan Lee, Steve Ditko version of Spider-Man, and I think... Whatever they're doing with this new Spider-Man might be a little bit different, so they might want to edge it in a different way. I, I'll never forget J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah. I just don't think that you know he'll like putting him back in as J. Jonah Jameson. It feels like we've been there already. I wouldn't hate it at all. I would actually welcome it coming back just because he was so good it's in perfect. it. perfect. And it's a nice nod to the previous Spider-Man movies that had a lot of qualities to them. Like right. the first two were awesome. The third one, eh, I love the first Andrew Garfield one. And the second one was, eh, I enjoyed it. What, what am I saying? But I'm also going to say I love the idea of John Bernthal as the Punisher in Daredevil, right? right? But I also wouldn't hate to see Ray Stevenson or Thomas Jane be the Punisher in some sort of capacity again. They were mm. both really yeah, underutilized in, in those movies yeah. yeah all right what's next justin marquez writes who do you think will be the surprise breakout character from suicide squad oh you know what um jai courtney now look we're Ooh. i say that because we're expecting harley quinn to be big right. and they we're expecting will smith's dead shot yes if you're gonna ask me what do i think has the potential to be the surprise one it's Jai Courtney. That last Suicide Squad trailer, he looked a lot better in that than I thought. Now, it's just a trailer. Totally understand that. Could be terrible. But I think if anybody is poised to really surprise us, I think it might be Jai Courtney. See, I'm will I, I want to say Margot Robbie, even though so many people know who she is but now. We're expecting but expecting so much from Margot Robbie, could she, would she, that really be a surprise? Because I haven't seen her do anything like this before. Mm -hmm. You know, it's such a different change. Where even Jared Leto has done so many roles that are that are out there before. I've never seen Margot Robbie flex this muscle, and Will Smith to some extent. But it even looks like his Deadshot, he is still going to be within the the Will Smith prime range where he knows he can knock it out of the park. Margot Robbie's doing something completely different. But I have to agree with you. I think it's going to be Jai. Courtney because we're going to see him do something we've never seen him before, which is have a personality. <laughs> you see him throw a boomerang. I think, isn't he playing Captain Boomerang? I believe one so. One of the I lamest characters is, yes. ever created. So he has a lot to, he's got, he's going from zero. So you know what I mean? Like there's not a lot of people expecting like Captain Boomerang, my favorite, except for Robert Meyer Burnett, who's already pre-ordered the hot toys of Captain <laughs> Boomerang. I think it's going to be Killer Croc. That's my, or Enchantress. Those are the two like out there right. way off shots that I think are going to come right around and you're going to be like, oh my God, the Enchantress was freaking awesome. So those are my two guesses. Now, a little a little trivia for you. So Jai Courtney, who is playing Captain Boomerang, I believe he's playing Captain Boomerang, uh, was in the television show, one of my all-time favorite shows, actually Spartacus. 
in TV's Arrow, Captain Boomerang was played by another Spartacus actor. I cannot remember the name of the actor off the top of my head, but he's great, but he played the character Asher in Spartacus. So wow. you got two Spartacus dudes wow. playing Captain Boomerang. Just a little bit of frivolous trivia for you. <laughs> All right, what's next? Jesus Christ writes, <laughs> <laughs> if you could be James Bond or Spider-Man, which one would you pick? Spider-Man. No, 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 no. Black. Yeah, no doubt. Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man. Wait, if I could be one? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, Bond has a lot of fun, boys. You know, so does Spider Man. Yeah, Spider Man, Spider -Man has really fun. And you can have superpowers. No, 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 no. You know what? Climb around. No, 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 you don't have superpowers. You're a freak of nature, and I want to be James Bond because all Spider Man does is he meets a girl, then he's just worried about, oh, what are my bad guy enemies going to do to her? James yeah. Bond never worries about that. You know why? Because he doesn't call the girls the next day. He just goes to another country and he meets another girl. I want to be Jimmy Bond. He gets to drink more. Yeah, he does seem to name his girlfriends or nickname his girlfriends expendable. Yeah. That yeah. seems to be his yeah. nickname. But wait a minute. Remember, the question is it's not that, you know, you get to be, so it'd be Mark Ellis as James Bond. Or Mark yeah. Ellis as Spider-Man. Oh, you don't think I could pull off Jimmy Bond? I, hey. think, I think James Bond becomes a dude with a lot of Doritos in his apartment, <laughs> yeah. watching a lot of infomercials after midnight. Crying himself <laughs> to sleep. <laughs> All the cold light, shaking not stirred, eh? <laughs> that was not English. Right. <laughs> that sound, you sound a bit Irish, <laughs> there, yeah, mate. Bobby's walking around hey. trying to stop me from hooking cool up with light. every girl on this block. You might as well get me a warm Guinness while you're at it, mate. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> right, what's next? Robert Chisholm writes, what do you think of the new full-length Jungle Book trailer? Really enjoyed it. Yes. Really enjoyed it. I mean, it's still, it's hard to compare to that D23 footage we saw, but nobody else has gotten to see it yet. Right. But I thought it was very impressive. I, I, I loved it. I, it makes me really excited. It's only, it went up to my top five films of the year to see because just I, I can't wait to see. I grew up watching the animated Disney film. So seeing this new version with Baloo and Scarlett Johansson, and uh, I mean, she plays the snake. Obviously, all the di Shere Khan, uh, Christopher Walken as the giant freakish orangutan. Yeah. I swear to King God, Louis. I said it yesterday. King Lou, I want to see him sing that song. I want to be like you. <laughs> I want to see that. Just in my own mind, I'll probably be hearing that, even though yeah. it won't be in the movie. And think of the motion capture Christopher Walken dancing. Oh my too. God. <laughs> like how, how amazing would that be? It's right there. Yep. He's an amazing dancer. Yes, you just he is. nailed yeah. it. I, I, you just, I bet that's a spoiler <laughs> that he just pulled out of his brain. And how he would pull uh, off that's, I want to be like you. Yes! <laughs> yes! Uh, Can that happen? My Walken's a little bit better than my British guy, but neither one's good. I am very excited about seeing the Jungle Book, and here's why. Is when I saw the Super Bowl trailer, it just upped at another notch in my already high anticipation level because I'm going to throw King Kong, Peter Jackson's version, under the bus just for a second because mm -hmm. I enjoy that movie. I saw it on the big screen, loved it. Saw it on TV, like rented on DVD or whatever, and it just like, the CGI didn't quite transfer over to the small screen, right. but watching the Jungle book trailer it looked just as realistic on my tv as it did when i saw that footage at d23 mm. that gives me a lot of hope for just how realistic how engrossing this world is going to be i'm like you guys i am over the moon about this movie it cannot get here soon enough all right what's next justin marquez writes what children's movie still gives you the creeps till today what children's movie oh good question Ooh. actually a good children's there has not been a lot of good Children, like kids like feeling scared. Right. Um, that's why I was really excited about, um, uh, what was it, the Goosebumps movie. Mm -hmm. But it didn't quite turn yeah. out the way I was kind of hoping it would. Uh, but I was really intrigued by this idea of, look, there's a safe zone that you can do scary for kids. I think kids would like that. But I'm trying to think of... A Christmas Carol, like the 1970s version. Yeah, I, I don't know if I call it a kid's yeah, film, but I, it's kid safe. Kid safe. I remember it is creep, freaked me creepy, out. Yeah, right, yeah. especially when you get to the end and you see what's under the ghost of Christmas presents yes. like, robe, and then yeah. the ghost of Christmas future ups that a notch. Like, yeah. it's pretty crazy. But for me, it's going to be Disney. I had, like, the TV movie of the week in the late 80s and early 90s that usually it was just kid-friendly, and occasionally they threw Mr. Boogity at you. It was Mr. Boogity or the Bride of Boogity, which is one that really got me. Mr. Boogity looks so scary and creepy that to this day, it's like you see that guy and it's it's not on par with the horror movies of today, but it, it, he's a freaky guy to watch. He's got a magic cloak. Eugene Levy was in the second movie, so <laughs> check it out. <laughs> All right, what's next? All right. Brian Howe writes, what is your favorite underrated horror movie? Mr. Boogity. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, we mentioned this last week. I'd say if you haven't seen Screamers, that's a good, that's underrated. It's very underrated. It's it's a fun, weird uh, science fiction horror film. 
Uh, Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Uh, so I would, yeah, that's that a, that's a great one. I'd say From Beyond. It's a Stuart Gordon, uh, H.P. Lovecraft adaptation with Jeffrey Combs. Amazing. Abominable. It's about the. It's about Bigfoot. It's totally ridiculous. And I think it was made by Sci-Fi, but it's got some good jumps in it, man. So if you get a chance to check it out, Abominable. I was gonna go throw Troll Hunter in there too. It's just like a Troll movie Hunter's where it's amazing. not. It, it's not gonna scare the crap out of you, but it's a really fun movie to watch. Yeah, and you have to see it with uh, you know subtitles so that when they yell out Nurfengrigen, <laughs> you know the weird three-headed trolls coming at you. <laughs> they got the weirdest names for these guys. All right, what's next? <laughs> Cam Newton crybaby, right? Thoughts on Captain America's Civil War news? Well, which news? Yeah. The um, um that's a good question. That's a great question. A lot of hashtags. What this Captain week. America news did I miss? I will say this. I mean, we, we touched on it yesterday. Is that you know that Captain America trailer uh, during the Super Bowl? It, it's tough to give something that's going to be really memorable and really make an impact when it's thirty seconds, right? Because it's so expensive to air these ads, and, and it turns out the, the numbers just came out. This Super Bowl is the number three all-time most viewed television program in history wow. was this particular Super Bowl. So you can imagine how much the advertising on it cost. But that Captain America Civil War spot was, mm, you're on the wrong I mean, side. That, yeah. Well, the gunshot, that's the thing. That, yeah. And then uh, how good did Robert Downey Jr. play that when the gunshot went off and he was like, what the hell? Like that was, and then of course you see Vision, you see Black Panther, right. you see Ant-Man in the lineup. I mean, that was really cool. Yeah, as a guy who's always been worried about what are the stakes going to be in Civil War, that trailer shed a little bit of light on it for me, and it felt like I was watching the football game right before the real football game took yeah. place because yeah, this team lining up here, it's like they're about to kick off yep. to this team that has Vision returning the kick and seeing the way that uh, the, the Tony starts at the hand, like, like the Iron Gotta Man watch. hand thing. Yeah, oh God, that was so cool. So yeah, it was a great, great 30-second spot. All right. One thing, a little piece of advice for those of you sending in Twitter questions. Please be a little bit more specific. Um, like, hey guys, what do you think about the uh, the stuff about that thing? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, try to be a little bit more specific you know, about that. That would just help. Well, us in his a lot. defense, Cam Newton's very emotional. It's been a very yeah. rough right. for Cam. What do you think about the Captain America rumors? <laughs> Cry, fetal position. Answer me. Answer me. We can't. We need more information. <laughs> All right. What's next? Christian Corbett writes: What color would your lightsaber be? Blue. Red. Green. green. Green, baby. Return of the Jedi. Damn, green. son. I'm a Sith, son. <laughs> All right, what's <laughs> next? Evo. Russell Williams writes, has there been any word on the Raid 3 or Gareth Evans' next project? Mm. Oh, um, yes. They are doing. They are, are currently in pre-production, I believe, on Raid 3. Yep. That's working. As far as... Um, his next project, I haven't heard anything of you guys. No, but I believe, yeah, you're right. They are doing the Raid 3. It is a go with him directing it, but then they're also still going forward with the the, the Hollywood remake of the original Raid, if I'm not right. mistaken. Is that still happening I think as that's well? called Dread. I, I just think that might have fallen off. I hope so. I hope because it fell, it fell off. Very hard to improve upon the original. Yeah. But, but here's the thing, though. I'll say this about the, the idea. Of, I often hear when the raid comes up in a North American version, the people, the seven people out there who have seen the raid go, oh, it will never be as good as the original. So what? It, it, it doesn't need to be You'll as good as the original. You'll always have the original. You'll always have yeah. the original you right. go back to. But guess what? It's only you and six other people and a bag of peanuts somewhere that have seen it. I mean, you're talking a grand scale thing. It, it's unfortunate how many people have not seen the raid or the raid 2. It's crazy. But the vast majority of moviegoers right. have not. So what's the harm in making a North American version to let them see it? If anything else, studies have already proved if you do a North American version, it will introduce a lot of people who might never right. have seen the original right. Asian version to go and see the original Asian version. Nobody ever saw Infernal Affairs. But I know a ton of people who have seen Infernal Affairs because Martin Scorsese made The Departed. And so then they went to go see the A lot of people never saw the original Ring. But then they saw the Ring in North America and then they went and checked out the original Ring and heard there was original. I think a North American version could be good and even if it's not, it's, I think it's going to turn a lot of people on to checking out the original Asian version than ever would have normally. So I see no bad news with doing a North American version. It, yeah. It's a fair point, and I tend to agree with you, but my six buddies and their bag of peanuts are pissed right <laughs> now. Right. They pissed. are very angry. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of those six people, but I also don't <laughs> disagree with you because, you know, if you saw Let Me In, a lot yes. of people then saw Let the Right One In, which is, I think, a superior film. Mm -hmm. There's it's, Let Me In isn't horrible, but Let Let the Right One In is a superior version of those films, and that's available on Netflix. Mm -hmm. The same could Girl be said. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Girl with the Dragon thing. Tattoo. Nobody saw the original. And no one will see the second or third one because they're not going to make an uh, American yeah. version. So you can actually see these crazy extended, uh, I think it's Finnish, Finland? 
Is that it? Or Sweden? It's Sweet, one of those two. Sweden Norway or, or yeah. is it something else? Some place covered in ice and freezing <laughs> with a great chick with shock, a mug. Lots yeah. of top so a lot of uh, those, those three, they're on Netflix. Check them out. They're amazing. All right. Two more questions. Okay. The Tin Man writes, how long does it usually take to make a movie? Oh, it really depends. I think average, I think, is probably 10 weeks shooting actually 10 weeks for an average film if you're going to talk about the bigger blockbusters you can be like 90 days of shooting sure. uh, some small indies I know will shoot in like in like two, to 14 three weeks. days yeah usually uh, like, independence are two to three weeks if you get a month you're like damn how, how much money do you got son I got two million mm -hmm. that's like an independent film is like if, they, if you're shooting for more than you know two weeks or 21 days you got a little bit more of a bankroll if you're a larger studio production three months to six months as you can see these bigger giant films like Batman v Superman or Avengers Infinity they're like a year and a half and that's and that's we're just talking about production now for don't forget pre-production which is writing the screen yeah, totally different thing yeah, yeah if you're talking about all in you're talking about three to five years per film but okay so i'm a studio chief right i want you to direct my picture i want a star i want another star i want a boy i want a girl they're going to have some adventures together we already got the script it's polished it's ready to go i'm going to give you 80 million dollars i'm going to give you one month of pre-production two months of shooting two months of post-production can you make my movie now, wait yes a second. is that your james bond or your christopher walker <laughs> That's I'm a just clever amalgam of the two. Okay, a stu I say hell yes <laughs> because if you're if you're given those parameters and you're given that kind of money, yeah. you'd be stupid that you wouldn't say yes. Even if you're like, it might take three more days. And you're like, everything gets destroyed if it takes more three days. Th then no, it'll we can do it. You say yes when you get eighty million. And, and if the script is good. Yes. Yeah. And th but then every once in a while you get a situation like uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, or whatever, where they actually decided on it, greenlit it, and had it all out within a year. I mean, right. so it, it really it depends because every movie is different. So I think the ballparks we gave you here are probably Deadpool close. was greenlit was last yeah. year. Mm -hmm. So that's like a mm -hmm. year turnaround. You got some movies you're able to turn it around because that script had been sitting and done for four years. So. All right, last question of the day. Right. Anish writes, with The Rock being Black Adam, who do you want to play Shazam? You know, we speculated on that for a long time. I would just like them to tell us when Shazam is going to come out. <laughs> I mean, at this point. You announced, you know what? I, I have nothing to back this up with, okay? Nothing at all to back this This is pure speculation on my part. I am wondering what the status of Shazam is right now. Because they announced Dwayne The Rock Johnson long before any of this stuff that's going on now at the right. DC Cinematic, way before. And we still haven't seen anything budge. I, I still have no idea when they're shooting this thing. I have a very bad feeling that something has gone wrong and Warner Brothers might have quietly shoved it away. Like, again, I have nothing to back that up with. Don't take that to the bank. I'm just saying I've got a bad feeling about Shazam right now. Yeah, but it's supposed to come out, what, 2019 or 2020? Maybe. Right? Yeah. So I, I wouldn't hit the panic button just yet because that special that they did with the Justice League and all these new movies coming out, all those movies tie in very, very prominently with the actual Justice League and the events of Batman versus Superman, which is why they were featured in that. So I wouldn't just see that and say, oh, no, we haven't. Uh, uh oh, th th this thing is now it would be nice to get a star and a name attached to playing Shazam because we already have such a huge star playing Adam. So I, I don't know when we would hear about it. I just don't know that we need to do it yet. I got to say, I mean, when I, just thinking about it now, it's like the Man of Steel's, uh, you know, Superman's villains, I think are gonna be kind of absorbed into whatever the Justice League part one and two. I'm pr pretty sure you'll see, obviously, Darkseid and Brainiac mm -hmm. can easily be absorbed into those films. What does that leave the Man of Steel, you know, besides Lex Luthor, what if Black Adam was the villain of Man of Steel 2 and that's their side door entrance to introducing Shazam into the DC universe? I don't particularly think like Shazam and his origin as well as his rogues gallery. It's like a little tiny worm and a Mr. Magoo dude. You know what I mean? It's like his character lineup of villains is not that great. So I think you might maybe take the, the side door you know, approach. It was such a coup to lock up The Rock for that deal yeah. anyway. And yeah. so if you if you get The Rock to sign on the dotted line, you get him whenever you can get him, to you get him to sign, right? And so now if word gets out of there and it kind of gets leaked out, it doesn't look good for DC where they're trying to keep it quiet. So you do a huge explosion. Hey, we got this guy to do this role. All right, now what do we do? I don't know, take a nap for a couple of years? Like we don't need to worry about anything else right now. We got this dude to sign on the dotted line. Right. So I'm not going to panic just yet. All right, last question of the day. All right, Marco Portuondo writes, what did you guys think of the live-action Scooby-Doo movie from 2002? Man. 
I, uh, I, I give me some Scooby Snacks. I'm a huge Freddie Prince Jr. fan, and I'm a huge Mark Blucas. Was Mark Blucas? Matthew no, I don't Lillard. Know. Matthew, Matthew Lillard. Lillard. Matthew, Mark Blucas <laughs> played him in the Jay and Silent Bob in that one scene when yes. the Scooby-Doo gang shows up. My bad. But uh, I never actually saw the movie, so I can't. I don't know. I will say I saw both movies. I saw the Scooby-Doo one and then the weird like Scooby-Doo and a gang of ghosts or whatever the hell the second one was called. <laughs> that sounds and like it. I liked, and I, now I'm merging them too. The both of them, I can't remember the difference. One was better than the other one, and I don't remember which one it was, but one of them had like the baby Scooby-Doo. What was his name? Scrappy-Doo. Scrappy-Doo. Scrappy which... He was like the, <laughs> the shitty villain. He's like, I'll, I'll get you, Scooby-Doo. And I like that they did that flip on Scrappy-Doo because I always hated Scrappy-Doo. I was like, why is this guy around? ruining stuff you know just like baby fang they have to introduce the baby version of the <laughs> adult weirdo characters already scooby scooby doo like him and shaggy did you know drugs all the time yeah so and i'm glad in the movies they kind comes of comes here yeah, they kind takes of takes all know, their weed yeah it's a, it's a it's a weird a weird live action uh series and scooby doo was cgi right yeah the, the yeah. dog was cgi yep okay yeah you probably need to get high to watch <laughs> yeah it's a it's, it's better to be affected when you see those films <laughs> All right, guys, <laughs> on that on cheerful that note, note, that'll do it for us for this episode of Collider Movie Talk. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, don't forget, <laughs> lots of great films playing at our friends over at AMC Theaters. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for all of your theater showtime and, of course, your movie ticket information. Don't forget, if you want to enter that giveaway for The Witch, look down into the comment section of this video. Find that link. Click on over to Collider.com. Find out how you can enter. The deadline is midnight tonight, so don't daddle. Get on it right away. I want to thank the guys sitting at the table with me. First of all, sitting over here on my left, Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? You can find me. You can find me. Uh, just follow me at John Schnepp on the Twitter and Instagram. Get my film, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened at TDOSLWH.com. Chuck me some Scooby Snacks. I'll be hanging out behind Ellis's entourage somewhere in the streets of the Grove. <laughs> sitting over here on my right, Mr. Mark Ellis. Mark, where can people find you? <clears throat> uh, Zoic Scoop, we got to get back over. These ghosts are taking a sense. It's not a ghost. It's a silly old man running oh. amusement park. That was Jimmy Bond as <laughs> Scooby-Doo. Uh, you can find me tomorrow night not doing any accents at the Hollywood Improv at 8 p.m. That's Wednesday night. And then this weekend, I'll be at the Comedy Store in La Jolla online. Mark Ellis live. Uh, for, forgive me. Where's La Jolla? La Jolla is just north of San Diego. There's two comedy stores left in existence, John. I'm glad you asked. There's <laughs> one in Hollywood on the Sunset Strip where you were at this past Saturday. The other one is just north of San Diego, La Jolla. It's a beautiful community. There's a Ferrari dealership right across the street. <laughs> I only nice. ask because I am doing a guest spot on that show. Oh, are you? No, I'm really John not. John Campy is no, not. I'm really not. No, no, no. <laughs> and of course, our lovely host name is Ashley Mova. Ashley, where can people find I you? I won't do any accents. You guys can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Ashley Mova. Happy, Happy Tuesday, Tuesday, guys. <laughs> Ashley Mova, ladies and gentlemen, crumpets for everyone. Now, is that Ashley's dad you just did? <laughs> My dad. Hey, Ashley, you go to your room right now. You're not going out of the house dressed like that. No, this is, this is how Ashley's but dad sounds. I told you, Ashley, don't take my scuba snacks. <laughs> <laughs> and of course you can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter simply I don't know how we lost it Where, at what point did we lose control I'm not sure you follow me uh, on Facebook and on Twitter simply at John Campia that'll do it for us guys thanks so much for joining us for a Collider video and until tomorrow bye bye <laughs> hey guys if you like this video click the thumbs up button also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel it'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider